Oh. What? The next SCP is the French Hive. Which... Yep. It's another B SCP. All right. Item SCP-1702. Object Class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-1702 is concealed in a sealed repurposed hangar at Humanoid Containment Site 06-3, which has been fitted in reinforced concrete honeycomb structures. 1702 is to be provided 600 kilograms of food and mineral supplements daily via automated delivery systems consisting of material as outlined in document 1702-6. Experimentation with 1702 requires prior permission from at least two level three senior researchers and direct contact with 1702-1 may only be performed with direct oversight from site command. Personnel entering 1702's containment area must wear lightly colored reinforced biohazard suits with full rebreathing equipment and must be quarantined for a maximum of six hours after exiting the area. In case of aggression from 1702 or at the discretion of observational oversight, 1702's containment area is to be flooded with smoke and all personnel must th proceed directly to the nearest exit. Personnel have failed to report to an exit are effectively unrecoverable and will be declared killed in action. Description SCP-1702 is a species of apian humanoids consisting of a hive with a single fertile queen and several hundred sterile workers. 1702 specimens have an appearance not analogous to normal humans with the notable exception of several prominent apian structures, including antennae extending from their heads and chitinous skin along their backs and limbs. 1702 also have similar internal physiology with the notable addition to, of a compound stomach with a chamber capable of processing organic material and raw ma minerals into a substance resembling human bone that can be regurgitated and used in hive construction and repairs. SCP-1702-1 is the queen, a large fertile female, approximately 2.1 meters in length, and the only member of 1702 capable of reproduction, typically laying up to 30 eggs per day. Highly intelligent 1702-1 is capable of communicating with personnel in a previously unknown dialect of French, it has proven highly cooperative as well as being the, s the source of most of our knowledge regarding 1702's behavior in hive mechanics. Dash 2 are male specimens that are only present during the beginning of a mating cycle and have only been encountered once in a foundation containment. Dash 2 appear to be only minimal intelligent and do not respond to attempts to communicate by Foundation personnel. At the end of the mating cycle, all Dash 2 specimens were systematically driven away by the hive or killed. Dash 3 are sterile female workers, currently approximately 340 in number, responsible for, recon for construction and cleaning of the hive's physical structure and nurturing young. Dash 3 also tend to Dash 1 and are responsible for feeding, cleaning, grooming, and in inducing egg laying in the queen. Dash 3 appear to be highly intelligent and capable of complex problem solving and logistics, but appear to have physical vocal cords and have not responded to attempts to communicate. Dash 3 only have a lifespan of approximately 5 years. Oh no. SCB-1702 was first discovered in, in the Paris Catacombs circa 1944 
by, the me by members of the French resistance during World War II, who are able to broker safe passage through Santino II's hive in return for living German prisoners of war. 1702 was rediscovered and redacted, after which a foundation containment team was able to convince 1702-1 to relocate to biocontainment site 63. Citing the effect of urban expansion on its environment, the possibility of being discovered. It is not known at this time whether French government officials were aware of Santino II's existence in an intervening time period. Addendum 1702-1 Research Note SCP-1702-1 has proven a challenge to communicate with, aside from its unusual dialect. It also has a constant state of incoherence and delirium consistent with intoxication, which I suspect to be a side effect of the pheromones that it is constantly exposed to. On its own, Dash-1 does nothing but wander the hive and must be guided by its workers whenever the eggs are needed. Despite these issues, 1702-1 has nonetheless been a valuable resource and provided important insight into itself and its hive. I also believe that it may consider me to be a friend at this stage, and I may be able to leverage that trust. Dr. M. Colette, Senior Researcher. Hmm. Addendum 1702-2 Research Note Despite extensive experimentation, it appears that 1702 requires a minimum of human biological matter to reproduce properly. Attempts at limiting 1702 to strictly non-human material resulted in the birth of unhealthy workers and caused considerable distress to the hive as a whole. At the insistence of 1702-1, and with oversight of approval, 1702 is to be provided a new diet as outlined in document 1702-6, which is consistent of no less than 5% human biological material processed from redacted and only, if absolutely necessary, terminated Class D personnel. Dr. M. Collette, Senior Researcher. Addendum 1702-3. Incident Report 1702-5 Unredacted, during contact conducted by four personnel including Dr. Collette and Dr. Redacted, Dash 1 reportedly entered a state of lucidity, during which it suddenly pleaded with personnel to be re rescued from its hive. Dash 3 specimens tending to Dash 1 then began to enter an aggressive state, which prompted oversight to terminate proceedings. Dr. Redacted and Agent Redacted were able to escape containment unharmed, but Dr. Colette and Agent Redacted were unable to escape the containment area and were subsequently declared killed in action. A camera carried by Agent Redacted continued to transmit auto-visual data for approximately 2 minutes and 17 seconds before being cut off. Footage records showing Dash 1 apparently being attacked and torn apart by Dash 3 specimens while screaming in pain. Addendum 1702-4, Incident Report 1702-6 For a period of approximately 35 days following Incident 1702-5, 1702-2 remained highly aggressive and resisted all attempts by personnel to enter its hive. After 1702 calmed down sufficiently for safe passage, two armed and armored personnel were dispatched into 1702's containment area to investigate. Personnel reported that not only did they locate 1702-1, but the queen appeared to be unharmed. Recorded footage indicates that while the queen has the exact same appearance, behavior, and personality, Dash 1 no longer has any memory or recollection of the events prior to Incident 1702-5. Addendum 1702-5 Research Note Just as in Nature 1702, Queen appeared to be a prisoner of the hive. So long as she is perfect and productive, the workers will pamper and protect her. But the moment she becomes damaged, they will turn on and replace her. 
To the best of our knowledge, this is not the same queen anymore. Just a replacement crafted to the same perfect ideal that the hive expects and requires. That the tissue sample the claimant team managed to recure shows a DNA match for Dr. Colette only reinforces theory. Dr. Redacted, Senior Researcher. That's it of that anomaly. Yeah. Oh. Oh my. What? what? You'll see. Yep. BDSM. <laughs> that, how does that have to do anything with the SCP? I don't know. <laughs> so, four. Are we ready for the video? Yeah. All right, then let's do this. In three, wait, hold on. Volume. In three, two, one. The passageways and damp walls were enough to make even the most avid adventurer claustrophobic. The stories and history of the catacombs of Paris were not common knowledge. Nonetheless, yeah, Chen and Kloss didn't yeah, know yeah, they were they hundreds are. of years old <laughs> and were initially built to bury the dead bodies filling the streets of Paris above. Are you sure about what you saw? Also, we they didn't use it's just a little bit further. made out of, out of bones. Yeah. All the walls are bones. Yeah. <sighs> Did they literally put subscribe in a catacomb entirely made of bone? Yes. I don't know about this. I'm getting an odd vibe. Like he enjoys being down. Beaver laugh brain. We've gone this far. A little further won't kill you. Famous last words. The passages and tunnel system grew narrower, their flashlights casting eerie shadows on the walls and ceiling. Up ahead, their guy Theo came to a halt. I worked on here for years. This was a wall, but a few weeks ago the demolition above ground must have cracked it. That's when I found it. Claw stepped forward to the gap in the wall, shining his flashlight inside. Hmm. Okay, let's go through. Chen? Chen stepped forward. I you mean be to go to in? Of course. Yeah, Are you sure? The gap is too yeah. small for you. Yeah. I feel like I'd be Come. first. Yeah. Come on, Theo. I'm a small guy. With a wink. Chen raised his leg and leveled a firm kick oh, at the wall. It came crumbling down, dust and debris scattering everywhere. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-1702, the French Hive. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. James Subtle Chen, what would we do without you? You want it in? You're in. As the dust settled, Kloss crawled through the gap into a cavernously large room. What in the... Before him stood a giant beehive, close to 100 feet tall. Oh, they're gonna sexualize the anomaly. Kloss reaching an arm out. Be careful, Chen. Yeah. We're not alone. Coming from within the hive and around its sides, a few women appeared from the darkness. Uh, bonjour. Como esta? Uh, hold up, Chen. They aren't human. As they slowly approached, they could make out what looked like antennae and a honeycomb-like pattern oh my from parts God. of their body. From between the women at the front of the hive, a tall, elegant lady came forward towards them. 
She must have stood over two meters tall and was dressed in what appeared to be some sort of honeycomb evening Why dress. Across her cheek, a small... Queen? Don't worry about it. How did they add racism? Don't worry about it. it. All of them Scar. have darker skin but the queen. Like I said, don't worry about it. Oh. Who are you? We aren't here to harm you. You can call me Kloss, and this is Chen. The guy back there, Who that's the. Back to me? I would immediately you? assume they're here to harm me. Yeah, and plus, it's hard to just understand what she says. It's the type of French dialect she uses. Oh, that's true. Uh, it's it's supposed to be hard to understand. Uh, I have her speaking English here, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honor of addressing the queen of this hive. As she spoke, she swooned and stood uneasy. Her maidens came forth to steady her. It was a colony of some sort of hybrid bee humans. Do you really think that's, you can convince them to? Just because they're humanoid doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jerry. To come back with us? I mean, they've probably been down there for ages. Maybe even before the catacombs. They've already agreed. What? How? The hive is right under the site of the demolitions. One way or another, that hive will be destroyed. Soon. Our protection is their best Are option. Are they really lying about how they got the hive Thank you for move? coming with us. Yep. I know it can't be easy to leave your home. Home? The colony can always build another. Also, well, they removed Dr. Pablo from this, didn't they? Yep. So far. Ginny, you must stay strong. She swooned again as her maidens helped her to a seat. Kloss walked back to his seat. Why, why did she, she always appear room? intoxicated? I don't know. He had more questions than answers for the time being. The initial construction of the hive had started before they had arrived. Progress was fast. It would soon be able to house the colony. The remainder why? of the work would be conducted by the queen's workers. Uh. They could produce a bone-like material used to build their hive. But... They needed to consume human flesh in order to do so. The majority of the hive's inhabitants were traveling by plane. Well, there were over flesh. 300 of them. Yeah. The queen had come with only a yeah. handful yeah. of handmaidens to Why take care of her. The right. Sorry. Hi. Even as they traveled, she still had to meet her quota. 30 eggs per day. Dr. Kloss? Ah, Dr. Colette! Why is she like a mixture of Dr. Bright and Velma from Scooby-Doo? I don't know. <laughs> Interested to meet our new... client? Very. Well, let's get started then. They walked to where the Queen was standing, near the new hive. Your Majesty, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Colette. She'll be taking over well, soon and seeing to your needs. Very nice to meet you. The Queen slurred her words. Ah, yes, and you. What a lovely brooch that is. Colette looked at Kloss. Was the queen always so... drunk? Her eyes suddenly focused, a look of panic in them. Help me! I need to get out! Help me, please! Her handmaidens immediately swarmed around her, dragging her back to the hive as she screamed and called that out. Never Kloss moved towards the queen, didn't. but was stopped by a maiden. The warning was clear. Stay back. That was odd. What do you think it meant? I don't know. It's really very perplexing. I'm hoping that Python yeah. can shed some light on the situation. Perhaps something in the past might help to the explain iPods. the current situation. Oh, oh God damn it! Of Paris. What a romantic place. <laughs> One time, Lucius and I. Lucius and you? Don't stop now. Keep going. Perhaps that's a story for another day. Come, come, boys. Let's see what we can see, shall we? They stepped forward, reaching towards the glass. They were in the catacombs once again. 
Above them, they could hear air sirens and bombs going off. The sounds of planes and people screaming. It must have been during the Second World War. They heard hushed voices in the distance. Sat at a small table was a young woman. Across from her, a tall shadow sat. Behind the tall figure, a few women stood, the antennae in their heads, almost disguised by their hoods. The young woman reached across the table and shook the tall figure's hand. The tall figure stood up. It was the queen. She looked identical. She was the same age now as 80 years ago. The only thing missing was her scar. Hmm. How's that possible? She hasn't aged a day. Yeah, doesn't seem right, does it? Get Colette. I want to speak to the queen again. The handmaidens didn't seem pleased about the scientists seeing their queen a second time so soon. Or perhaps they were worried about what another outburst from their queen could mean. You asked for me, Dr. Kloss? Dr. Colette stood behind Kloss and Chen, an agent by her side. Let's push her. I want to see if we can find out more about what happened earlier. As they approached the queen, she stood to greet them, unbalanced and apparently intoxicated once again. Your Majesty, you asked for our help earlier. I did? I don't recall. I, um, well... Her eyes suddenly focused. Uh, yes, help me. I don't want to. Not anymore. Her handmaidens pounced on her, dragging her back once again to the hive. Oh my Stop. god. You're hurting her! Stop! Colette ran after the queen, her escort in tow. But it was this too late. No, it did not happen. Into the hive, and the remaining handmaidens barred their way. How long's it been? Over a month. Well, I guess we can assume Dr. Colette, an agent. Oh my god. That's an image from another anomaly. I know. Franks have been be right. recycled yeah. into the hive. Unfortunately so. Nonetheless, I want a closer look inside the hive now that they're finally speaking to us again. What? Two agents came into the room, one carrying a flash drive recovered from Agent Frank's body That's camera. Kloss played the does. short recording back. It was awful. The Queen's yeah. handmaidens had torn Agent Has Franks and the Queen to bits. Now that, there was... now that the doctor is a woman? Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it, it's... What the heck? <laughs> oh my god. Hardly anything left of either of them, but no sign of Dr. Colette. Disgusting. Let's go speak to the handmaidens. As they approached the hive, they saw the handmaidens on guard at the entrance. From within, a tall, shadowy figure stepped forth to greet them. It was the queen. How was this possible? They had seen her die on the body cam footage. She smiled at them with her scarless face, fingers playing with a red brooch around her neck. Whoa. SCP-1702. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, Jerry, what do you think about that bee? No. <laughs> is a species of apian humanoids consisting of a hive well. with a single fertile <laughs> queen and several hundred sterile workers. SCP-1702 specimens have an appearance analogous to normal humans, with the notable exception of several prominent apian structures, including antennae extending from their head and chitinous skin along their backs and limbs. SCP-1702 also have similar internal animal. physiology with the notable addition of a compound stomach with a chain Yep. <laughs> Look at what they're eating. You piles of uneducated shit. <laughs> Sorry. Bye. Remember, capable of processing organic material and raw minerals. Oh my god. To a substance resembling human bone that can then be regurgitated and used in high construction and repairs. SCP-1702-1 is the queen, a large, fertile female approximately 2.1 meters in length, and the only member of SCP-1702 capable of reproduction, typically laying up to 30 eggs per day. Highly intelligent, SCP-1702-1 is capable of communicating oh, with personnel in that... previously unknown- It's only theorized the queen is there against her will. Yeah. But this is nonsensical. Okay. Yep. Alright. Own dialect of French. 
and has proven highly cooperative as well as being the source of most of our knowledge regarding SCP-1702's behavior and hive mechanics. SCP-1702-2 oh are male specimens which are only present during the beginning of a mating cycle and have only been encountered once while in Foundation containment. SCP-1702-2 appear to be only minimally intelligent and do not respond to attempts to communicate by Foundation personnel. At the end of the mating cycle, all SCP-1702-2 specimens were systematically driven away from the hive or killed. SCP-1702-3 are sterile female workers, currently yep. approximately 340 in number, responsible for construction and cleaning of the hive's physical structure and nurturing young. SCP-1702-3 also tend to SCP-1702-1 and are responsible for feeding, cleaning, grooming, and inducing egg-laying in the queen. SCP-1702-3 appear to be highly intelligent and capable of complex problem-solving and logistics, but appear to have vestigial vocal cords and have not responded to attempts to communicate. SCP-1702-3 only have a lifespan of approximately five years. SCP-1702 is contained in a sealed, repurposed hangar at Humanoid Containment Site 06-3, which has been fitted with reinforced concrete honeycomb structures. SCP-1702 is to be provided 500 kilos of food and mineral supplements daily via automated delivery systems, consisting of material as outlined in Document 1702-06. Just because someone appears to be happy, successful, rich, don't assume their life is all it seems. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, what? like, and share. What? If you wait, will. wait, what? Until next time, farewell. I was just randomly saying while he was muttering, what does the honey taste like? I don't know. All right. Removal of character slash license. They technically didn't remove any of the. God damn it! I hate it. I'll have to give it a zero. Uh, a, a zero? Is that what you said? Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Added gore or violence? Four. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> They also made the characters very sexual. <laughs> yeah. Four. Deviates. Four. Yeah. How did they fucking pull that off? And offensiveness. Four. Yeah. Because honestly, now that I think about it, in order to fly, because bee wings aren't like as sturdy as bird wings would be on a human. That's right. They would. Ha they wouldn't have like big. Fucking boobs or big muscles. They would have very thin bodies in order to help help, help them fly. That or the bodies would be curved in such a way, yeah. where, like a bee's. Yep. And again, it's twenty four percent. I mean, twenty percent, not twenty four. 